Good evening. Uh, thank you all for coming. This is the Beverly Crest Homeowners Association Association meeting. Also, we're going to have the candidates of the upcoming races. I would like to introduce our board members. To my left, I have John, Mike, my right, I have Courtney, Stella, and I myself is, am Alice. Um, the way the meeting is going to be run is according to the way the candidates are here at this time, um, they're going to have about three minutes to speak about their campaign, and then we're going to have a three to five minute question and answer from everyone here after each group of candidates uh, speaks. Does everyone understand that? Do, does anyone have any questions? Okay. We're going to start currently. Do we have anyone here from Rob Esserino and Dora George Latimer group? No. Okay. So as there's a meeting going on tonight, so they we hopefully they will be showing up later. Um, we're, we're, anyone here from Liam McLaughlin's office? He's on his way. Okay, so we're going to start with Mike Cater, who's running for city council president, and we'd like to welcome Mike. Also, if the candidates could use the microphone, if you like to use the microphone. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. First, I would like to start off the evening by thanking the Beverly Crest Homeowners Association for having this forum. This is a great opportunity for homeowners and residents uh, to get to meet their candidates. Good evening. My name is Mike Cater, and I am the Democratic candidate for Yonkers City Council President. I am a lifelong Yonkers resident. I was born and raised in the city of Yonkers. I'm the youngest of seven children. I have 23 nieces and nephews, and they all live in the city of Yonkers. I am a product of the Yonkers school system. I graduated from Lincoln High School in 1994. My three children all attend the Yonkers school system. My wife and I, who is in the audience today, uh, run and say hello, <laughs> <laughs> are committed to keeping our children in the Yonkers public school system. I'm a homeowner. I used to live in Dunwoody. My parents are still there. My brother has a house there, and my sister have a house in the Dunwoody section. I live in the Cecil Crest section of Yonkers. I, like you, am a taxpayer. I have to pay my city taxes. I have to pay my water bills. I have to pay all the other nuisance fees that happen. And that's why I decided to run. When I moved back to Yonkers, and I seen what's been going on for the last few years, I seen all the money coming in all the homeowners and residents being nickel and dimed. Seeing that we have a $1.2 billion budget and every year we have a crisis. Folks, if we have an annual crisis, that's not an emergency. That's how business is done. I wanna come into the chambers of the city council, offer a fresh perspective. And people always ask me, what are you gonna do on day one? Okay, education, budget, on day one, I'm gonna go down to the butcher's fancy, I'm gonna get a meat cleaver, and I'm gonna chop up that budget. Because we gotta see how we're spending money. It's a sin that we don't have enough cops on the street. I actually took an initiative a couple of weeks ago, and I said, not for publicity, we need more cops on the street. We need more cops on the street. McLean Avenue to Riverdale Avenue, Beach Hill to Park Hill. We need more patrol. And my opponent and his majority said that was fake news. Every day, every weekend, there's a shootout. Just last night, a young man got shot. Number two, education. I hear constantly, my kids are not in the Yonkers school system. I send them to St. Barnabas. I send them to Annunciation or they're out of school. One of the biggest factors that affect your value is the quality of our education. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean this with sincerity. People are not going to move into Yonkers because of our bars and our restaurants and our shopping. Young families and the middle class are going to move to Yonkers because of their quality of life, safe streets, and education. And that's not happening right now. The reality is anyone that can afford it the working middle class are selling their homes, paying an excessive transfer tax, and moving to an area where there's better 
school districts. Your pension or your home, for most people, your pension and your home are your biggest investments. And folks, if you have a bigger investment than your pension and home, God bless, tell me the secret. So as a city council president, I want to make sure that I protect your biggest investment, and that is your home. We could still preserve the unique neighborhoods of, C uh, of Cecil Crest, of uh, Beverly Crest, of McLean Heights, of Park Hill, Beach Hill. They say what Yonkers is a, a city of 26 unique neighborhoods, and there's truth to that. Reality is we are becoming an urban city. But as we become an urban city and we have more influx of people coming in, we have to preserve the character and integrity of what made Yonkers and what will keep Yonkers a great city. As your next city council president, I look everyone in the eye. There will be accountability. There will be transparency. And there will be ethics enforcement. We have a great ethics code. It needs to get updated. But I will ensure that there's enforcement of that. My moral compass, my morals and ethics are not for sale and they're not for rent. I thank everyone for their time and attention. I look forward to answering the, any questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to have John Rubo come up from City Council, 4th District. I left some of these on the um, table this way you can hang them on your doors when you get home or on your pantry. Remember that November 7th is election day uh, and we hope to have your support that day. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Yonkers. I was born and raised here uh, off of Seminary Avenue uh, in the Dunwoody section. Uh, my grandparents still live there. Uh, my parents still live there. Uh, I not only stayed in Yonkers uh, when I purchased my home here on First Street, I didn't even move out of the council district, so uh, I stayed very close to home because uh, our family dynamic is very important to us. And so I'm raising my two children, Dominic and John. Uh, Dominic is two, John is seven months. Uh, my wife, Dawn, uh, is from the home field section of Yonkers, so we brought her over from the other side of the city and uh, we have a, a two-family home in, uh, right here off of McLean. Uh, I'm running for several reasons. I've made an investment in this city. I've made an investment because I believe in raising my family here. I've made an investment in purchasing a home here. And I've also made an investment by opening a business here. We've uh, invested over a million dollars in the uh, waterfront here in Yonkers, opening the Yonkers Brewing Company. And so every day that I'm out there, I'm not only promoting uh, a business, but I'm promoting Yonkers. We adopted Yonkers as our brand, as part of our business, because I love this city and my partner, we both love this city. Um, there are a few things that I want to focus on as your city council person. I think what's most important to Beverly Crest are quality of life issues, uh, things like speeding, police. Uh, we're, we're fortunate to have a uh, strong captain in the second precinct, and we've always been very fortunate to have great leadership at the second precinct. Uh, and I want to continue to do the things that Dennis has started uh, in and around uh, the McLean Avenue area. We've spent a significant amount and made some significant investments here along the McLean Avenue corridor with uh, the streetscape program. I believe we should also do that along um, Yonkers Avenue and invest in the other arteries in and around um, the 4th Council District. I want to focus on taxes. We need to con not only make Yonkers an affordable place for young families to want to come, but for the people who have lived here for generations uh, or who have invested here in Yonkers. When you retire and you lived on a fixed income, you want to hold the line on tax increases. Um, at the same time, we want to make sure that we're providing our police, fire department, sanitation with the tools that they need to be able to provide us with that uh, quality of life that we all expect. 
Uh, also, I want to focus on education. As having two young children, education is very important to me. I believe there are things that we could do very uh, much more efficiently through our education system. We spend over a half a billion dollars a year, over $500 million a year in our education system, and I'm confident that we can do things more efficiently as we get in there and work with the administration in a very bipartisan way. I'm running as both a Republican and a conservative. Uh, I believe in being able to work with the Democratic mayor, as the current council has currently done, and I think they together they've been able to create a very great dynamic in working with each other. Um, I also believe that we should follow the city's four-year strategic plan because we should not be uh, addressing the budget year to year. We should have a four-year strategic plan, as has been laid out by the mayor and the administration and working with the council, to identify future sources of income, uh, to identify where our shortfalls will be in the future, and addressing those in advance, rather than waiting year to year and hoping that the, uh, the governor or the state legislature will uh, bail us out, as we have in the past. So. Um, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Uh, I believe in, in really focusing on taxes, education, and of course, smart economic development for the city. Um, the one thing I do want to touch on about smart economic development, we as a council district, we as a community here are very fortunate. People are coming to Yonkers. Gone are the days where you hear about tax breaks, 20 years, 30 year tax breaks, uh, like we needed to give to Stu Leonard's in order to attract uh, Stu Leonard's or Home Depot to Yonkers. We don't need to do that anymore. And the administration is not. They're giving out uh, five-year deals where over the course of five years, developers like up at Boyce Thompson, where they opened Fortina Pizzeria and uh, the Taco Project, where over the course of five years, they will hit 100% tax uh, for that property. I believe in, in a small amount of uh, incentive to be able to bring people here. The cost of doing business is expensive, but in, in bringing them to Yonkers versus them looking at Nourishell or Mount Vernon, I believe is very important. And having that little bit of incentive, um, I, I believe should exist, but not on the back of our taxpayers, certainly, and not on the back of our, uh, our education system or our children. But we've been very fortunate in seeing hundreds of millions of dollars not only invested in Yonkers Raceway and the Empire City Casino, uh, but also at Cross County Shopping Center, over $400 million invested in that property. So I believe Yonkers is on the right path, and I want to continue that progress that we've seen over the past eight years as your city council person. So thank you. Scott, also running for City Council, um, District 4. And here is me, Scott. Good evening, everybody. Um, as you know, my name is Maeve Scott, and um, I'm, I'm a long-term resident of Yonkers, as you know. Um, been here for 35 years, and like John, I didn't move far from where I started. I, my husband and I bought a home here 30 years ago, right in Beverly Crest. I raised my three, three children here. Courtney, Courtney is one of them. And I'm very proud of the life that we, we built here in Yonkers. But during my time in Yonkers, I've always been involved locally. I was involved in the Parish Council of St. Paul's, working with Monsignor Gallagher for close to 20 years. On the Beverly Crest Homeless Association Board, I worked, um, I'd say, at least 15 years um, on the board. And for the last five or six years, I've been a special advisor to the current board and they're doing a fabulous job. Um, and please give them a hand a round of applause. And while raising my children in Yonkers, I was involved in all the, all the community and sports and civic act activities that one would expect. I'm also an active member of the Ladies Ancient Order of Hibernians. So being active and engaged in a community is, is part of my DNA. But I want to tell you a little bit about my, my, my career. I um, had a 34 year career down on Wall Street in Manhattan. My background is operations, finance, budget, and management. Just to give you, my, my resume is quite extensive, and many, many of you probably don't know it because I'm not a braggart. But at this point, I think you need to know about my experience and what makes me uniquely qualified to be on the council. For over a decade, I was budget director for a worldwide global insurance company. That company was AIG. Okay, that, that company operated in 130 countries and jurisdictions. 
I was responsible for all the people and processes that were involved in that budget. The revenue budget for that company ranged from $80 billion to $110 billion. By comparison, as, as Mike mentioned, the Yonkers budget is $1.2 billion. So I have the background, I have the analytical skills to get the budget of Yonkers done right. Okay? I have heard year in and year out about budget crises in Yonkers. Well, under, under, if I, when I'm on the seat, that won't happen anymore because we'll have a strategic plan and we'll have monitoring of that budget. Okay? And I will be able to analyze that budget and go in and look for waste and inefficiencies. I did it my entire career in corporate America and it will be no different in the City Council of Yonkers. Additionally, for over 10 years, I was director of the worldwide government reporting for AIG. In that capacity, I dealt with regulators at the national level, at the federal level, and at the state level. I dealt with the SEC, the U.S. Commerce Department, the Department of Labor, the Treasury Department. I won't go on and on, but my, my, ex my extensive experience is basically unparalleled. I am quite well versed in dealing, dealing and interacting with government officials, and I know about compliance. Additionally, I don't want to go too far, but I have a very expensive, extensive resume. Additionally, I said I did a lot in operations and process improvement. I went domestically and internationally, and I helped set up businesses. I helped set up operations from the ground up in, in India for my company. So I know about operations, about efficiencies, about product process improvement, and those are all skills that transfer easily to government. And that, that is a, a little sampling of my resume. Okay, I just wanted to make sure everybody understands. I believe that I'm uniquely qualified for this position, and I will be a, a positive val value add for the district and for the city of Yonkers. Now, in terms of what's motivating me to, to serve, well, two years ago I retired okay, from, from my career, and I was looking for my next opportunity. And I really um, didn't, I didn't expect it to be right in my own backyard. I always had been involved and I always was passionate about community involvement, about quality of life in this, ish, in this area. When, this, when I became aware of this opportunity, I was compelled to pursue it. I, I didn't feel that we were being served the way we should be served. I, didn't feel, I feel that I can be the most responsive, engaged councilwoman this city and district has ever seen. And if you know me, you know how passionate I am. And if I put it on my list, it's going to get ticked off and it's going to get done. So, that's what motivates me. I'm passionate, I'm energetic, I'm focused, and I'm determined. Okay, what are the issues I'm going to focus on? Well, first and foremost, it's going to be the budget, because that's where my expertise lies. And I'll be able to look for inefficiencies and waste and redundancy in that budget. And I will make sure that your tax dollars are working on high octane, and that there's not a penny being wasted. I will make sure that there's proper oversight of the budget, that there's transparency, that there's quarterly reporting of the budget, and that we have a strategic long-term vision that is integrated with the annual plan, which we don't have right now, and that there won't be an annual budget crisis. Those are the compelling priorities that need to be addressed. Education. Every year we talk about education. We, we're not getting a proper amount of funding from Albany. Well, I don't understand why. I really don't understand why. To me, it seems like we have the wrong leadership, the wrong focus, and the wrong vision. Well, I have new ideas, and with my colleagues, I will work in a collaborative way to, to come up and brainstorm for the right solutions. All my career, I worked with all different, uh, all different races, all different types of people, and I always collaborated, and I always got the best out of the people I work with. And that's how I will operate when I'm in City Hall. Number two, smart business development. We talk about smart business development. Yeah, we've done a lot of it. But from my vantage point, we don't hire locally. There's, con there's construction jobs that, are, that happen in, in these projects. They're importing uh, labor from New York, from New Jersey, Connecticut. That won't happen under my watch. Okay? The tax incentives, we, I don't think we should be giving any tax incentives, quite frankly. I think Yonkers is a gem. We have the Hudson River. Okay? Developers should be, should be paying us. Okay? I think that if we, if we do give any tax benefits, they've got to be verifiable. If, we, if jobs are promised, they need to be verifiable. So there's a lot that we can be done with smart business development. In terms of quality of life, in this district, you just have to walk on the streets of this district. I see litter, okay? I can walk from McLean Avenue 
down to Tibbetts, and you can walk for 10 blocks and you won't find a garbage can. I've been complaining about this for years, and it's fallen on deaf ears. And that's another reason I'm, I'm running. Because the, the constituents in this area, they need someone who's going to hear the complaints. And I will hear them, and I will respond to them. And I will put them on a list. And it, like many women, I make a list. And when I put somebody on the list, it gets checked off and it gets done. Okay? You, look, you walk around the district, you see empty, vacant lots. They're eyesores. You see empty storefronts, Yonkers Avenue, McLean Avenue. We need to focus on small business, getting, encouraging small business to come into this district. It's, there's a lot of focus on other areas in the city. Our district is not getting the focus it needs. Streetscaping, as John mentioned. Yes, Yonkers Avenue is the stepchild of the district. But also, the other part of McLean Avenue has never been done. Only half of McLean Avenue got streetscaping. Why is that? So there's plenty of, we have plenty of room for improvement. It's a great district. I want to ensure it remains great. I want to make sure that my grandchildren want to live here. And right now, there's an exodus of families leaving Yonkers because our school system is not what it needs to be. So my, I have a vision, I have passion, and I have determination. And I know that I can serve you like you have never been served before. And I'm asking for your vote of confidence on election day, and you will not be disappointed. Thank you very much. Hey, 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 just stay here for a second. If anyone had, has any questions for John or Maeve at this time, no, no one has any questions. Thank you. Um, we just, I think George Latimer just came in. If he would like to come up and speak, he's running for county executive. Hi, I'm George Latimer, and I'm running for Westchester County Executive. Uh, you'll see me on the Democratic line, the Independence line, Working Families, Women's Equality, and Reform. So there's uh, a number of different opportunities you have either to vote for me or against me. Um, I am a, uh, a kid from the south side of Mount Vernon, Irish-Italian kid. I'm 63 years old. I grew up in Mount Vernon. I went to the Mount Vernon public school system. When I hear Maeve talking about the Yonkers system, I grew up in a very similar system all those years ago. Uh, I did my undergraduate at Fordham University, where I was a commuter, and I have a master's degree from NYU. I spent 20 years in corporate America working for subsidiaries of Nestle and ITT in a sales and a marketing capacity up to corporate office uh, level responsibilities. And in public office, I've been a councilman in the community that I've lived in for the last 30 years, Rye, right by Playland. If you get nothing out of my presentation, make a note that I live near Playland. You can park in my driveway, walk into Playland and save 10 bucks, which is probably worth a hot dog or two. Probably only one hot dog. The, um, uh, the position I've had is a county legislator. I served there for 13 years, and I was the first Democrat to chair the Board of Legislators uh, almost 20 years ago. And then I've gone on to serve in each house of the uh, state legislature, both the Assembly and the Senate. As a senator, I represent this part of Yonkers. Uh, over the last few years, prior to that as an assemblyman, I had a district that was uh, over on the Sound Shore from New Rochelle to Port Chester. I've got government background experience on different levels of government, and I have experience in business. Now, you have an incumbent county executive. Tonight is more about me telling you what I want to do, but I want to change the direction of county government. I think we've been narrow in the way we focus for the last eight years. I know about county government, and I think we're letting things slide that need to be addressed. We have capital project needs. You look at Sprainbrook Pool, I know it's on the diagonal opposite end of Yonkers from where we are now, but that pool, the main pool, is laid fallow for seven years. There's no reason for that. We're a smart enough and, and wealthy enough county to allocate resources to attack that problem. If anybody's driven, driven on the Bronx River Parkway and you think that's a well-paved, well-maintained road, then you would be in the minority of one. And that's a representative uh, issue to be dealt with. We can do things in Westchester County because people who ran Westchester County for many years did those things. During the Depression, the Bronx River Parkway was built. During the Depression, Playland was built. And those were visionary actions by our uh, grandparents' age generation. But we're not going to get there if all we're going to do is count pennies and get into the kind of political battles that we've had where it's all about negativity and nastiness and attack politics. You need to bring people together. When I chaired the Board of Legislators for those four years, first Democrat, I appointed Republicans and Democrats to chair committees. 
across the board that was unprecedented to the degree that was done when I did that. And why did I do that? Because I believe the only way you're going to solve the problems of this county, and I'd argue the nation, but that's not where I'm at, the only way you're going to solve the problems of this county is to do it on a bipartisan basis, not on a partisan basis. You're going to have to find a way to work across the aisle, respect each other, and solve problems, and stop all of this petty bickering that's going on. I also think that we've let ideology drive the train, and we need to be pragmatic. Some issues, when they're decided on the great continuum, fall on the conservative side of the ledger. Some of them fall on the progressive side of the ledger. And we become too dogmatic, thinking that only one agenda is the agenda that works for Westchester County. We've got a number of issues to deal with going forward in your backyard and across the county. I'm going to stop talking because I think I was told three to five minutes, and that's when the buzzer went off in my head. <laughs> Answer any questions that you may have. And since it's a limited amount of time and there are other uh, important candidates that you're going to listen to, if anybody wants to reach out to me, you can reach me out and email latimergeorge at gmail.com. If you send me an email with a question, whatever doesn't get asked tonight, I'll be happy to try to respond to you. So I'll stop, and if you have a question, I'll be happy to answer it until uh, somebody pulls a plug on me. Thank you. You want to recognize uh, if anybody has any questions? I could, but does anyone have any questions? What's wrong with the Giants? The, op <laughs> the offensive line is what's wrong with the Giants. What's wrong with the Jets? I was shocked they won. Shocked. <laughs> Happily shocked. Two more runs for Judge. What's that? Two more runs for Judge today. That's right. He's 50 now, doesn't 50. he? First time a rookie ever had 50. Yep. So if you think I'm a politician and all I care about is politics, and Gary Sanchez has how many? 33? 37? He's right there. All right. If, if there are no other questions or no questions at all, I appreciate the courtesy of coming here, and I'm happy to reach out to you. There's 43 days left to the election, and I want to make sure you know exactly who it is that I am, what it is that I stand for, how I would run this county government in a way that would make you feel comfortable, whether you are a Republican or a Democrat. Thanks a lot. And now I would like to invite up Liam McLaughlin, who's running for city council president, who is our current city council president. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's uh, great to be with you here tonight. Um, I guess I'll start off with an introduction, although looking around the room, I uh, feel pretty comfortable. I know uh, almost everybody here. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm Liam McLaughlin. I'm uh, the current city council president uh, running for re-election. Uh, as many of you know, or most of you know, I think, I was the uh, council member for this uh, district, having represented the fourth district for 10 years. Uh, I was term limited for four years uh, and then came back and ran for city council president. Uh, in my first term as city council president, I think we've gotten a lot done. Uh, we've been, but I think the primary thing, and it was something that George was just talking about, uh, is trying to work together. You know, we've had a Republican majority on the city council. Uh, we've had a Democratic administration. Uh, but the Republican majority has been working very well uh, with the Democratic administration. Uh, and one of the paramount things that, that we've been doing is trying to uh, protect the homeowner, protect the taxpayer. Um, and working together with Mayor Mike Spano, uh, the Republican majority has done that the, the great uh, for each one of the, the, the current budget cycles. So uh, it, it's, it's something I'm very proud of that we work together uh, with the mayor. Uh, we, we had, you know, when, when I came into office, we had a lot going on. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this, but I remember pretty clearly within two weeks of taking office, uh, we found out about a $55 million shortfall at the Board of Education budget. And this wasn't like the annual issues that we have where we're not sure what the state funding is going to be and we're arguing, you know, we're lobbying for more state funding. Uh, this was a $55 million hole where there was an accounting error uh, that, had, that brought this about, and this is what we were facing. We were looking at, you know, potentially devastating layoffs, uh, et cetera. But working together with the council, with both Republicans and Democrats, with the Democratic administration, uh, with our Board of Education, uh, we came up with a, an IMA, an intermunicipal agreement, uh, which helped us to find some cost savings, some consolidations, uh, save money, and basically save uh, the, the, the school system. And this, and this also happened uh, with the cooperation of the state. So, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult thing to do. There was a lot of different pieces at play here, uh, but we were able to make it happen, quite honestly, by working together. You know, I, I feel that if, uh, if Washington and Albany uh, could operate the way we've been operating in the city of Yonkers, things would be a lot better, where the, 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 the partisan divides uh, are not so strong, and they shouldn't be. You know, there's, uh, as the saying goes, there's no Republican or Democratic way to fix a pothole. 
Well, and we really all just have to work together to get it done. And, you know, when you've got council members who live in the district, uh, they know their areas very well. I've run citywide, uh, so, can, you know, like the mayor, uh, try to have a global view of the city and, and what's going on and, uh, and, and represent the entire city. Got a lot of different things going on in different areas. Uh, one of the other things that has, has really been a, a hallmark uh, of this administration, but also this council, uh, is the economic development that we've got going on. Uh, we've got a great deal of economic development. Uh, big, big contractors, big companies uh, are looking to come to the city of Yonkers. Uh, you'll see just, uh, I guess it was like two months ago, uh, we had the grand opening of Lowe's up in, uh, up in Ridge Hill. You know, there wasn't a Lowe's in Westchester County. Well, we got it here uh, in Yonkers. That's the type of thing that we're trying to do. We want to bring good businesses uh, to the city of Yonkers. Uh, the, the, the development that's going on down on the waterfront, it took a long time to get going. There was large parcels of land that could be developed, should be developed, should be generating tax revenue, uh, but weren't for many years. It took a long time to get it going. You know, honestly, when I first ran for city council, uh, I can remember people saying on, in, in this district, when I talked about economic development and developing our waterfront, they said, well, what, what are you worried about that for? That's all the way over there. It's two miles away. It's still our same city. And, you know, we, we, as the waterfront, as the downtown uh, is rebuilding, as we're bringing people in, uh, trying to make it more economically viable, uh, it helps the city. There's tax revenues that are generated, and uh, therefore we don't have to, you know, try to, try to keep income, uh, property taxes, uh, the increases as low as possible. So I know we only have a few minutes, uh, as I, I think most of you know, too. Uh, I, I, I live in the area. I live right over by uh, St. John the Baptist Church. Uh, my wife, Debbie, uh, and my son, Ryan, and our dog, Jesse. And um, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what else I have time for. How many? Hey, question. You can take questions. Yeah? Okay. If anyone has them. We can go on, but I, I know it's a three- to five-minute uh, <laughs> spiel. Yeah. Alex, if there's one, no one seems to have yeah. questions. Yeah. I don't know. We have a quiet box. Thank you. Thank you all. Good to see you. And now I'd like to invite up Gwen Dean for, she's running for county legislator. Gwen. So this doesn't amplify your voice, no, it's no, just into yeah, the, it's just, it's just another thing for me to hold. <laughs> um, I don't have an internal clock, so I'm going to look at, at the minutes here. Don't worry. And uh, I will run on <laughs> we'll <let you> know. <laughs> next, um, next week when we break. Um, I also have some notes because uh, I'm not a politician. I'm your neighbor. I live on First Street between Scott and Wakefield. That guy over there sold me my house. Thank you, Henry, um, about 10 years ago. Uh, I am a Democrat. I was chosen by the party uh, to run uh, because of my several things. And I'd like to break up part of this speech into telling you a little bit about myself and my campaign and telling you a little bit about why I'm running. Uh, so I was selected or asked uh, and accepted uh, because of my record of service to the nation. I'm a veteran. I served eight years in the Coast Guard uh, pre and post 9-11. So my date was actually September 11th of 2000 and then one year to the day I was activated uh, and I proudly served. Um, I spent time as a district leader in the ninth ward here. Uh, so I knocked on a lot of doors and met everybody's dog and got really good at deciding uh, what kind of what breed it was before I'd opened the door. I'm pretty famous for that in certain circles. Um, and I got to meet a lot of my neighbors uh, and that's something I really love. Um, I spent 20 years as a union member. Uh, I was a tradeswoman in Local 94 which is the International Union of Operating Engineers. This is going to be boring but what I did was I made over a course of 20 years 65, 65 million gallons of chilled water for commercial office towers. So the data centers and everything that drives New York City, uh, I was the, uh, the person behind that operating large tonnage refrigeration machinery. Uh, I also uh, had the opportunity to and joined uh, SAG after, but I'll leave that for the end. Um, I also have uh, involvement in civic organizations and faith-based organizations. I'm on the choir at St. Barnabas and was a parish council member there. Um, I also uh, serve here at the Bejart Post. Uh, I'm the uh, adjutant and also uh, I'm on the executive and the building committees here. Uh, and trust me, we, we need all the help we can get uh, in helping our veterans and our veteran community. Um, 
I also, besides being a homeowner for the last 10 years, I'm 10 years into a 30 year fixed, I do not want to see our taxes go up at all. Uh, I also own a small business which is based in Mount Vernon, which is a stone's throw away, not to two miles at the waterfront, but literally half a mile down there, it takes me five minutes to get to my office. Um, I have a degree in communications from Fordham University, which is why I'm so long-winded now. And uh, I am currently a graduate student at Sarah Lawrence, which is also right up the road. Um, uh, in recent years, I have experience as a spokesperson. I was featured in GoDaddy's 2014 Super Bowl commercial, uh, and for the last two years had been their spokesperson. So I've done a lot. I've got experience outside of just schooling, uh, and I'm also never out of the neighborhood. Sarah Lawrence is in the uh, 14th uh, um, district. Uh, my business is located within the 14th district, and my home is located within the 14th, 14th district. And that's the thing that I've seen lately is, not lately, but really uh, over the last 10 years, um, a total uh, and utter uh, uh, ignoring on a county level of the down county. Uh, there's a lot of development uh, on the county level that goes all the way up from North 60, White Plains, and I gotta tell you that with that kind of development, it puts a lot of pressure on all of the infrastructure that goes down. Now, I was an operating engineer for 20 years. I also happen to have a uh, mechanical engineering degree from SUNY Maritime. And one of the things that I learned operating large buildings and large infrastructure and being through a few disasters, Sandy the Hurricane at 55 Water Street was uh, Towering Inferno meets uh, Titanic. I can tell you uh, that you don't want to get caught uh, having infrastructure problems like that and trying to build up county when down county needs development to happen first. Um, and that leads me to my first point of why I'm running. Our, our county infrastructure projects are extremely backlogged. We have a budget of about $2 billion, which is just slightly more than Yonkers, uh, but we have all these projects that are backlogged. And that is gonna cost us a lot of beans down the, down the path because you have to take out more loans, you have to do an extended amount of uh, uh, financial stuff in order to uh, make that work. And that just doesn't, you know, put the cart before the horse and you've got yourself lower taxes without even blinking. So that much I know, and that's something I would like to work on. Also senior housing. We have an, an aging population. I don't know if you've noticed the demographics here, but we have a population, uh, some people are refugees from the South Bronx, you know, when, when things went down there and they came up and they moved up to these beautiful homes, raised beautiful families, and they'd like to age in place. I'm not gonna take that from anyone. And what I'd like to see built and what I'd like to see legislated and built is senior housing because we have a lot of development going on right now, the Fleetwood area, uh, Bronx River Road, and no, none of the developers seem remotely interested in making something that's dedicated for seniors. Something like with those half moon driveways so that we're not blocking traffic when people with mobility issues come in and out of their buildings. Some place where you can actually go down to the laundry room and use the bathrooms and not have to lock them and leave your laundry and go back upstairs. Something where uh, the, the services, the county services can come into a building and they don't have to spend or waste a lot of money going from home to home to home. In fact, almost all of uh, there's a portion of, of Yonkers that is forced to have their social services come out of Bronxville because they simply cannot afford to keep up with those costs. And that's just ridiculous. Senior housing, because right now there's a false alternative. There really is no alternative. If you want to sell your home and get market rate for it, you know, you can go to Henry and, and do that, but where are you going to go? Now it's like here or Florida. So a lot of people stay in their homes longer than they'd really like to because they cannot stay in the neighborhood. There's just no alternative for them. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to change that. And those two issues alone will ensure long-term tax relief because when you get that inventory of housing that comes into the community and you have young families that have the opportunity to move in, you have interest in the school systems and everything kind of flows a little bit better. But without that kind of long-term planning at a county level, you're not going to go anywhere. Now, why am I running as a Democrat? 
because they don't seem to get picked for the last 20 years here. And I'm going to tell you one thing, and that's why a lot of people say, well, county doesn't really do too much. And they'd be really making a serious mistake. They haven't been able to do too much because the county legislature is controlled democratically by the Democrats. And so there's been no real uh, uh, legislation that's been put forward uh, that they've been able to vote on, that they've been able to, to, to get passed because they don't, the, the Republicans simply do not control the legislature on that level. So I implore you to turn around and take a look at it from a strategic standpoint and say, look, we have these things that we need to get done and we're being ignored. And Mount Vernon has a serious problem, but they're getting goods and services. Uh, uh, downtown Yonkers is getting your goods and services, but District 14 is completely being ignored. That has got to change. I hope to change it. If you give me that chance. Um, we have Eamon O'Brien here for David Tubiolo. He's going to speak or no? Eamon, do you want to say a few words? David's just at a vote right now, so he's going to try to make it later. If, if not... Um, thank you. Hi. Unfortunately, David can't make it. He has a board meeting today. Um, he's sorry he can't be here. Um, but he did want me to come and talk to you guys today. Um, so we just want to talk about David and his accomplishments. He uh, was a part of North 60, passing a BioCenter um, initiative that will create 12,000 new jobs. He sponsored K2 legislation banning synthetic marijuana. Um, he uh, also is working on a bill to um, uh, Sponsor, um, prohibit uh, drag racing. He's also uh, working. Uh, he also got funds for the McLean Merchants uh, Association uh, this uh, past weekend for um, the McLean Festival. Uh, he also uh, got the fifteen thousand dollars for um, Ashling Irish Center. So um, David just wants to, you to all know that he did want to be here but he, the board meeting. So um, thank you. I just wanted to let you know about his accomplishments. Mm -hmm. does, does anyone have any questions for the candidates? Because we might take a, a little coffee break. And then um, we'll speak. We'll have the police and fire speak. And then if we have any of our own issues on our board uh, for our association. That will be addressed afterwards. Does anyone have any questions for the candidates? Right, Coffee, break. Coffee break. Coffee break.